ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Mr. David Shermer. How are you feeling? I hope you got a good break. <laughs> We're going through, um, I guess, some cerebral information here, some things that you need to understand. Might be a bit heavy, a bit heavier than some of the other stuff. That's all good, isn't it? Yeah, good. Um, what I share with you is um, things from my own experience. As I said, I've got to this point over the last 24 years in the stock market and in business, and there's a whole bunch of lessons that I learnt that I found ways not to do things. <laughs> and, uh, and part of what I share with you, or the reason why I share with you, is to protect you from making the same mistakes I made. And I know that you, could fa you can fast track this. You can achieve um, more than what I've achieved in that 24 year period. You can condense that into two or three years, absolutely max. And so uh, that's really what, you know, I, I think that's really exciting once you have the knowledge and uh, just implement it. It's just, uh, it will just compound. Now, as a gentleman that asked me a question, in the break, where is he that um, around um, here? That's the man. Okay, he had a good question. I said, please ask me when you come back because it was a question I think that everyone needs to hear the answer. It'll be very uh, important for some of you. Just um, yeah, your name. Uh, hi, my name's Chris. Uh, my position is at the moment I can borrow s some money off my house, but I don't have an income to support that loan. So my question was, is it possible for me to, to take that couple hundred thousand dollars uh, to invest on the stock market okay. and, and be able to maintain that by not having an income? Okay. That, that's a great question because you will all get to the point, um, most likely, at some point in your life, where you uh, where you have a nice asset base, but you uh, but the banks don't see you as gainfully employed. Banks like to see you with a job because they know if you have a job and they stitch you, uh, they, they give you a big loan, <laughs> um, then you, they have you. Uh, they control you. Is that correct? They control you. What do they do then if, they, if you have a big loan and you lose your job and can't pay? <laughs> it's not nice, is it? So they come and they take what you think is yours, but they really think is theirs, and they have a piece of signed paper that says it's theirs, so they take it and you're left out in the street. And so we need to make sure whenever we're investing and creating wealth, we structure our investments that is not dependent on our income. It's not dependent on our income. So what we do is we, it's a thing called capitalizing interest. And um, it's, it's very simple to do in the stock market. In fact, probably simpler to do there than anything else. And this is something, again, that I cover. There's two other programs. When I start to teach people the stock market, what I found is that there are these other areas that people need to understand to really um, assist them both in keeping their wealth and compounding it more rapidly. And one of them is other people's money or how to effectively use it to use borrowed funds safely to propel you forward and then how to structure your entities so it protects whatever wealth you create. And so um, I've run a couple of courses around that. One is called the uh, using OPM, or using other people's money to retire sooner. And the last time we ran that one in the Entrepreneurship 101 course, uh, which is the, on all the corporate structures, we got someone to come in and, and, and video it. So uh, that's been in production for the last uh, couple of months and it's almost finalised. Um, because uh, that's something I don't need to be there to, 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 to tell you what to do. You can sit at home and you can learn it and replay it until you understand it, and it's a, a great medium to do it. Um, so this information is really, um, as I said, it's what, I, what I've learnt and gained over the time. But how do you structure it so you don't have to, it's not dependent on your income. Whenever you borrow money to invest, a couple of things you need to be aware of. You only invest in something that will give you 
a positive return or is safe and secure. So don't go and buy speculative stocks. Don't buy, go and buy stocks that someone wants, uh, you know, that, that someone tells you, you know, buy this stock, it's going to go up you know, real big in the next few months. Speculation will cause you to lose money. Don't go and buy floats in the stock market. 80% of floats are worth less than, than they start off with within two years of when they start. Um, so if you want to speculate with your money, my suggestion is divide your money up 90% into quality blue chip stocks and safe investments as far as property, 10% into speculation. That's your play money. You can use that to play with. Now, there's people here that use that 10% and make more out of that 10% than they do the other 90%. That's okay. But that's, that's the formula you should work around. Um, but how do you structure it so that you don't, so it's not costing you money out of your pocket every week? Well, it's pretty simple. When you, um, let's say you have, as, as uh, this gentleman just said, he has a home and he has uh, a, an asset in here. So let's say that this home might be worth half a million dollars. This home's worth half a million dollars. And uh, there might be some borrowings on it, but he could, but he could borrow out of that two hundred thousand dollars. So he could set up an investment loan to borrow out of it. Now this is a bit of a deviation, but part of what I share with you in the using the OPM, using other people's money, is don't cross collateralize. Banks love you to cross collateralize, which means bulk all your properties into one and get your loans through the same bank. Cross collateralizing is very dangerous. Well see if you have more than one property you go out and you, you, you follow the real estate advice and buy multiple properties what generally people do is they borrow against this one to buy this one they borrow against this one to buy this one and so on. Don't do that. The way to do it is you take your cash out of this property into a cash fund and use the cash because then the bank doesn't have the deeds over all the properties together. Because guess what happens? If you, can't pay the, if you can't pay the interest payment on this and they're all cross-collateralized, what happens? The bank will sell the one that's easiest for them to sell, which is normally your own home. So your own home is then immediately at risk. Okay, so I know that's really brief and some of you went like that. Um, that's what I cover in detail, part of what I cover in detail, how to set up and structure your loans so you uh, minimize or delete the risk that institutions, financial institutions, have you take on board automatically without knowing. Now, most, pe most banks or financial institutions, you'll go and ask them and you'll say... Um, is this loan cross-collateralized? And they'll say no. And yet in the fine print, it's yes. Be really careful with that. So let's come back to this, uh, this um, story here. And, um, and say, okay, well, there's $200,000 of available equity in here. No income. How do I use it and support it? Because if we borrow it out, we've got to pay interest. So we've got to pay interest on it if we borrow it out, but there's no money coming in from a job or another business entity. So what we do is we, set, we structure in such a way we have an investment loan that we only borrow a maximum of 80% of that. So what we do is we take out of that $160,000, up to $160,000. You always build a safety buffer in every, in, in every wealth creation strategy for a worst possible scenario. Not that you're expecting anything to happen. It's simply there as a buffer, buffer. It's a safety buffer. And so if, for example, you decide not to earn any income for a year, you can do that. It will fund itself. And that's what you want. It will cash flow or fund itself. So I can show you how to have a $5 million portfolio but not cost you a cent out of your pocket. Actually, not only be self-funding but also growing. And so we borrow only up to 80% of what's possible. So how much is left? 
40k. Now, if we look at this and uh, let, let's assume that interest rates were uh, on this investment loan 8%, how much interest do we have to pay a year? $16,000, isn't it? So there's a, four, there's a $40,000 buffer here. Interest cost is $16,000. Now we have an interest cost of $16,000. And so that comes out of that. So, so we borrow the money out. When the interest is due every month, the bank simply deducts out of our buffer the interest cost. Now, the good thing about shares is you're not going to hold them indefinitely, unlike many of you with property. The great thing of shares, it's, it, it, they are liquid. So what I'll show you is um, the strategy that I share with people is you are holding shares for a period of about 8 to 12 months. So you'll get your growth, you'll get your 20, 30, 40% growth in your 8 to 12 months and you'll sell them and you'll put the funds back in, which tops up your buffer. So you've got this constant circulation of cash. You take this and you go and buy your shares with it, $160,000 worth of shares, and when you sell, you put it back in. And so you're literally paying, it's paying for itself. Then when we go a step further for this, for this gentleman is we use what's called margin lending. Margin lending. The margin lending is, uh, is simply borrowing against your share equity. Now, with margin lending, it's not unlike borrowing for real estate, we can borrow what's called an up to 75% loan-to-valuation ratio. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you're borrowing 80% of equity out of a home, you're using 80% loan-to-valuation ratio. So if you have, have $100,000 to put in a property, you could buy a half-a-million-dollar property on 80% LVR, couldn't you? Well, if you have $100,000 in shares, you have a certain LVR. You could borrow another $400,000 or $300,000, sorry, $100,000 in shares. You could borrow another $300,000 for shares. So the LVR or the loan to valuation ratio allows you to borrow for shares. So if we had $160,000 worth of shares, we could actually borrow three times that to buy more shares. So we could borrow... Another, so we now have $160,000 worth of shares. We'll pop that up here. We could use margin lending to go and borrow another 480000 But we don't do it. And we have, a, we have certain formulas on how to work this out, but to give, give you a rough ratio, we would borrow around about $320,000. What does that mean? There's a hundred and six. There's a there's a hundred and sixty thousand dollar buffer available in this lending. How long would that last? A long time. So what happens is the interest payment for any of this. If anything went went wrong with our income, or if we didn't have our income, we have a buffer of forty thousand dollars there. We have a buffer of one hundred and sixty thousand that we haven't drawn out here that's available. We're only using. Of a possible 480 against our existing shares, we're only using 320. So we have a portfolio value of nearly half a million dollars that won't cost us a cent in cash. Because what we're doing is we're capitalising interest. Follow that? Okay, it's a little bit, a little bit more detailed and a bit more complex than most of you are used to, but it's very easy to set up. And once you understand this... Um, it's easy to do. It's really easy to do. In fact, margin lending is the easiest type of loan to get. You can get it over the internet. Here's something else interesting. You, can, you automatically qualify for a $3 million limit. <laughs> automatically. Regardless of your net worth or wealth right now. Even if you have a bad credit rating, you can get margin lending. Because it's based on your share equity. They take, they take control, if you like, or they take ownership of the shares in case you default, which is fine, but you, you can only use up to the limit you have in based in physical asset as far as the shares go. And so that's how you do it. You capitalise your interest. And you don't have to work ever. 
Right? If, you ha- if you have a $200,000 um, equity, you can have a, uh, a $500,000 portfolio within a week. If you're only earning 20, 20% on that, you've actually, you're actually got, a, got a growth of 20%. You're earning $100,000 a year. And if that's what feeds your lifestyle, you never have to work again. The whole thing capitalizes itself and you don't have to find any money. You don't have to work. You don't have to have an income. This is... <laughs> See, it's just that most people don't understand this. Most people don't understand. And you don't know what you don't know. Once you understand it, it's easy to implement it and get started. And it doesn't matter what age you are. Someone came up to me and said, well, you know, how do I go? Because, um, you know, I don't, have any, I don't have a job. I do have some equity, but I don't have any, any, uh, any job. So how do, I borrow the, well, how do I go to the bank and borrow money out of my property? First thing you want to make sure you have, whether you have a company or not, make sure you set yourself an ABN up, an Australian Business number, an ABN. You can go on to a website and set that up. Now there's certain paperwork requirements you have to fulfill with that, but here's what it does. If you have an ABN, that allows you to borrow money on what's called a business loan, and it's what's called a no-doc or a low-doc, a low-documents loan. You do not have to prove your income. See, if you go to the bank, what do they ask you for? Proof of income. If you don't have an income, you could have a million dollars worth of free equity in property and you can't use a bit of it unless you sell it up. So they, they want, they've got this formula that says, you know, if, if you don't have an income, well, therefore, you're no use to us because we can't stitch you up. And so, <clears throat> so what, you have, what you do is you have an ABN. You've got to have an ABN for a couple of years. That's why I say even if you don't need one now, get one. Because once you have an ABN, one of the criteria of getting a low-doc loan is you need to have an ABN for about two years. Once you have an ABN, you do not have to give any proof of income. And whatever you do give them, they don't check. Because it's a low doc loan. They're saying, you got the equity, so we believe. And so you, you provide them with that, and you can borrow, you can borrow whatever you want with, with that. We've got a quick question. Is it a personal ABN or a company? Is, is it a personal ABN or a It doesn't matter. You just need an ABN. It doesn't even need to be in the company or the entity you're borrowing the money. It just needs to be... Uh, whoever said you need an ABN, I don't know, because you could have a business in your own name, you don't need an ABN, but that's, but that, that's the requirement. So, uh, you know, you can go on. It costs you nothing to register. There's a bit of paperwork to fill in with the tax department every year. But so what? It, it opens up doors that gives you enormous possibilities once you have that. Yeah. My name is Lindsay. Um, what if you're in a situation where you are got no assets and very low income? That's pretty easy. Well, what would you do? Okay, so you pay yourself first. So the first thing you do is you pay yourself first. Now, if you've got no income when we first started, you, uh, you go to the bank and they want to know what your income is to get a, even a personal loan. So you can't even get a personal loan. Um, but what you could do is get a credit card because they issue those to anyone, don't they? So you go and get a credit card and, it pays, uh, and, and, uh, and they charge you an interest on that, but you know you can outperform the interest payment of that. And so that's one way of borrowing money if you can't get a personal loan. But the first place to start, if you can't borrow any money whatsoever, everything is stretched, no one would give you a credit card. This is exactly how we were. We, the credit cards were taken from us. We could not get a personal loan. And so we saved the money. You start off saving. You put 10% of whatever you have. doesn't matter how little it is, you put that aside. Because money attracts money. It's like flies to a honeypot. Once you start to save, money attracts money. And so you start to save and build it up and build it up and build it up. And so um, that's what you do. Just a quick question here. Hi, David. My name's Julie. Just on the credit card as a hint, there are credit cards out there that will give you six months interest free. So you get one on that pays interest and then you pay it off with the one that gives it to you for free. And you can cut the other one up. 
And by like, six months, you have your yeah, money back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's all sorts of funny things you can do. I used to capitalise interest on a credit card. So I had a credit card, and I would, uh, I, I, I would um, use. The, I would take cash with, or take the cash withdrawal out, and use that to invest. And then I would, uh, when the interest payment comes due, I'd go into the, uh, I'd go into the bank, and I'd take the cash, a uh, cash withdrawal out of the bank. For the, for, for the payment that was due each month, except for the interest component, because they, they want to say a 5% uh, amount each month on, on it. So what you do, part of that is interest and part of it is, is capital. So you, because you don't want it constantly increasing, you find the interest payment out of your own money, you pay the interest out of your money and borrow the rest back out the credit card and put it back in again. So you... <laughs> Go, go to the teller in the wall, take out your $100, walk in the bank and put it back in the credit card. And it looks like it's paid. You're fulfilling their criteria, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. The thing is you need to understand how money works and that, and that you, you are not increasing, you're not creating bad debt or debt that's not earning more um, the money's not earning more than what you're paying for the money. Hi, um, just two things. My name's Mire. Um Someone the other day said to me, oh, all this wealth creation, whatever, blah, blah. What if everybody gets rich, then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> like, from the point of view of, like, the economy, say suddenly, you know, half of everybody on earth was then had a lot more money. Does it do anything? Like, what, does anything happen? Apart from it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you, because that's a fear that actually stops people from earning money. So that's an excuse or a fear that stops people from making money. Um, because remember what Bob said yesterday, from abundance he took, abundance, yeah. and still abundance remained. Take a deep breath and how much is left? <laughs> abundance, there's still abundance. It's the same thing around money and people don't, it takes a long time for people to really comprehend this because we're brought up in a society, there is only so much to go around and we're all scrambling at a mad scramble to try and get the money that's ours and it's called competition. Forget about competition, just work on the creative plane. You know, to just work on the creative plane. You look at ways you can create. You can be creative rather than compete for money. You will be fearful when you're competing for money. And so whenever you're competing for it, you think there's a lack. Now, I want to explain it this way. I've just drawn this up, up here. Pretend this is the pie. And we've got six people sitting around a table. And, uh, and um, they divide the pie up equally exactly equal and they each get one piece of pie and then you decide you want a bigger piece how can you get a bigger piece what do you have to do share with somebody else you've got to sh but if you share steal theirs. <laughs> pardon? steal theirs steal theirs isn't that what most people try and do they try and take from someone else because they want a bigger piece of pie because they do not understand that there is an absolute abundance of pies. <laughs> so how would you get a bigger pie if you didn't steal from someone else or take someone else's? Make another one. Make another one. Or make a bigger pie. Now, could you go and make another pie? See, the interesting thing, and I like, the, you know, I use this example of Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the richest person in the world now. He's worth a couple hundred billion dollars. B, billion, a couple hundred billion. 35 years ago, he was this geek in a garage and broke. Where did that money come from? Like, does, has, that money, has that money been taken from other people? Or is the world better off because of it? See, in actual fact, we actually have earned money because of the money that Bill Gates has earned. There's more and more and more. And so the concept of people saying, well, because, you know, what happens when everyone gets rich? Have a look at what's happened in the last 100 years. Are people today much richer than they were 100 years ago? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, people are much richer. In fact, we could totally eliminate poverty 
and people could be millionaires. We would have, we, we, and we see this if we just study history. In the last hundred years, we're living like kings compared with a hundred years ago. We have these luxurious houses and cars and, and, and all that sort of thing. You can go out of here, you can create a business in a year's time. You can have a million dollars and the million dollars is given to you because of the service you provided, because you only get money when you help other people. And See? Does that help answer it? Yeah, it does. Good. And this, the last thing was, why the hell don't they and when are they going to start teaching this at school? <laughs> Like, yep. They just have to. Like, I just don't understand why they don't. Well, here's, uh, here, the, the, this is part of my journey, you see. I, was, uh, I used to sit down and show people how to do this across the table and, 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 and figures and so on. And uh, for three years, people kept saying, why don't you, oh, I wish I learnt this when I was younger. Why don't they teach us in school and so on? So part of my, my overall mission and journey is, is the creation of products for young people in schools. If you, could give, if you could give this information from kindergarten through to year 12, I believe by the time people come out of year 12, they could be millionaires at that point. You know? They could own their own home. And I believe we're in, a, we're, we're in an age and a state where, where a place like Australia could be the, the richest country in the world. We have everything here that we need. And it's just the only reason we don't is mindset, as people don't understand. And so it's our job once we, uh, once we get this information to then share it with other people, help other people to understand it and build their wealth. Well, I think you're all doing a good job so far, so thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Lisa. I was just wondering, with the previous example that you had about um, borrowing the equity from the house and then margin lending, if we wanted to sit down with somebody who would look through our own finances and would have a chat with, who would we go to for that? Um, call, call our office. Um, we've had this little challenge for years where most financial brokers you go to, they simply want to sell you a loan. They're normally not wealthy and they don't understand it. Um, they understand what you're trying to do. So we actually teed up with a, with a, with a company um, and, uh, and um, got the required licensing so we can actually help people to do that. So if you want some assistance, call the office and someone can sit down with you or walk through some strategies to enable you to put that together. Because when you first do it, um, it is a little bit daunting. Even, even filling out a margin loan form, for example, can be a bit daunting. And so it's, uh, it's much better if you can have someone to take you step by step through it. Thank you. Also, there's this type of information in your packages that you're selling as well, like on the DVD, it goes in a bit more detail. Of course it would. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just believe education is the key. Once you learn and understand, you go and do something because you understand, you're not doing it because you sold something that you don't really under know that was going to help you or not. So, you know, education, I believe, is the most important thing. Uh, 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 or, or as Bob said, learning. Once you, get, once you gather the knowledge, then take the step and get the experience, and then you've learned. And once you've done it once, you go out, and, uh, and it doesn't matter whether you do this in a really small way. Like some people have come to me and said, you know, I've got, I, I've got a million dollars... Um, I, 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 I'm scared and I don't know where to start. Don't start with a million dollars. Start with 10,000. Yeah? Take, take the first step and put your toe in the water and start with 10,000. Yeah? The market's always there. The money is in abundance. So start with 10,000, get the learning, get the experience, and with that comes the confidence. Once you do it once with $10,000, the rest is just nothing. It's just zeros, isn't it? <laughs> it's just zeros you're adding on and, and if, you can, if you can make 20 or 25% out of $1,000 it's no more effort to make it out of 10,000, 100,000, a million, 10 million it's just, it's, it's, it's the same steps yeah hi David hi thanks, thanks for uh... got to stand up hi, my <laughs> name is Fergal I'd uh, just like to make a contribution to today um just to indicate the sort of value that uh, I see that you're adding here in, in, the, in the seminar. Um, we went to dinner last night with um, a guy who owns one of the top five recruitment companies in Australia. He 
He's got about 1,300 people working for him. And Diana met him. Uh, she went to a, a health retreat and met him and his wife, and they turned out to be lovely people. I'd never met them before. And, uh, you know, we were asked why we were here, and we said we're in Melbourne for a seminar. So then we got the standard question of, okay, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I used to be in the corporate world, and I got to the top of the, the tree and that. And he said, well, why'd you leave? I said, well, I felt like I was boxed in. He said, what do you do now? I said, well, we invest full time. We've got share trading, and we've got property, and that's what we do. And uh, he said, oh, yeah. He laughed. He said, that's exactly where we wanted to see you in the box. He said, that's exactly where guys like us like to see you guys, because you're a slave. And, you know, he was quite open about it, a lovely man. He said, you're a slave to the system mm -hmm. once you're in the box. Mm -hmm. So he, asked, he started asking me about some of the stuff. And this is why I just want to bring attention to the value that I see in what you're teaching, because I started talking to him about some of this stuff you're talking about. He was looking at me. And he was taking a double take. Now, let me just put it in perspective. This guy told me he turned over $40 million last year, his company. He doesn't know anything about shares. <laughs> and he knows very little about property. And really, he knows what his business is, and that's a, fair enough. He's got a very successful business. He's got 1,300 people working from across Australia. But he wants me to talk to him again. Call me back. Email me. I'll, I've got venture capitalists, this, that, and the other. So another example is of where the money comes from. The money, you believe, is always there. It's just the idea that brings the money to you. So I just wanted to say that uh, I've been to a lot of different places to get the information that you just talked about here within an hour. And it's taken me a long time to do it. Yes. So the value, I, I really see the value here. I just wanted to make that contribution. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, David. My name's Laurel. I just wanted to share with the lady who was asking about what happens if you take a piece of the pie. Anyone here who's a parent of more than one child, probably like me, had the fear you've got the first child, you love them, you would die for them in a moment. What happens when the second one comes? Do I lose some of the love for the first one? Where does it come from? Think about it. you you know, it must have passed through your mind. The second one rolls up. Hello. It's just the same as the first one. And people who have more than two children, I'm sure it just continues. Thank you. Thank you. In case you didn't know, my wife has six. <laughs> and they're all boys. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's amazing the whole financial industry in this country is disseminated information to keep people in a lack of understanding. It is incredible. Even the very bodies that are set up to govern the financial industry are set up to keep people in lack and poverty mentality. If you go onto the ASIC website, and they are my greatest friends... Um, you will see that, any, that any, any course or anyone offering a return of more than 7 or 8% is a get-rich-quick scheme. I was interrogated by people from ASIC when, and they asked really smart questions like, how do you know that this works? And I said, well... This is something that was written about a hundred years ago and it's documented proof and it's been back tested over a hundred stocks for more than ten years ago more than ten years. But that doesn't mean it still works. I said, Duh. Are you rich? No, I'm a public servant. I'm here to make sure that other people can't think. You know, it's really it's really weird. <laughs> Um, so you, you, you've, got to, you, you've got to understand that, the, um, that even, even the very regulation is, is, is there through the ignorance of governments and people that are in control to keep you in a lack of understanding. And I've had all sorts of challenges. We were actually shut down for five months were told to stop our business because we were teaching people about the stock market. And when I questioned 
the interrogator, they said, well, when you mention the word stock market, you're giving people advice. When you mention the word stock market, you know, it's crazy. And so these are people that have, have very, very narrow or limited thinking. And you've just got to understand that's what's out there. And, uh, and the masses um, will laugh at you, you know, when you say, well, I'm, you know, I'm investing in the stock market. Oh, that? Gambling, how's it going? Yeah. Most people lose. I'll share a little bit of that with you. So uh, let's continue on. Don't want that one just yet. Um, and so the next section that we I wanted to say is make your home, and we've already dis- we've already discussed this. Make your home a profitable investment. Sorry, we've got one more question, have we? Sorry, I missed you out. Hi, David. My name's Jill. Um, Hi, Jill. Hi. Do you think that um, government bodies do that out of ignorance or do you think they do that to disempower people? Uh, Just watch The Secret. You've watched The Secret? Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the, the secret information has been purposely coveted for centuries and uh, most people do it out of ignorance it's like it's like anything it's like the medical profession you know doctors um, will prescribe a drug knowing that it helps someone but not understanding the ramifications you know and they're great people there's nothing wrong with the person it's they're ignorant of of other possibilities a financial advisor will tell you to go and put your money in the managed fund even though it's lost consistently for the last five years that's all they understand and then the managed fund will charge you when they lose money you know and they sell a whole entire community or population of sticking your money in a managed fund that loses money and so some people are doing it because they want to control other people are doing it because they're playing follow the leader you don't want to play follow the leader anymore Learn the skills and look after your money yourself. It'll make much more for you. And, um, yeah, you want to say something else? Okay, so, you you know, you get me started on the whole finance and managed fund industry. I could go for hours telling you what really happens behind the scenes. But why, why go and stick your money into a managed fund that someone else looks after and gives you a 2 or a 3 or a 4% return um, and, and they control your money. It just doesn't make sense. You can, not knowing anything, you can go and stick it in the stock market or go and buy property and get a better return. Here's an interesting, interesting fact. There's, uh, they constantly monitor the performance of managed funds. And Australia is one of the worst countries for financial information. Um, you know that Australians are not allowed to, or, or a, co- a company outside of Australia is not allowed to send you a prospectus or information on how you could make money without your approval. They are not allowed to. It's, it's stopped. So you're, really, you're literally shielded for opportunities around the world. There are opportunities around the world that can earn 100, 200% per annum, but most people here don't know that because they're not allowed to actually provide that information into the residents of Australia. It's quite amazing. Um, and so, uh, so um, what was I up to? Managed funds, was I? So, uh, you know, you, you, you put your money into a managed fund and, and then they take it and they churn it and give you back a little bit. Um, there, there are a couple good ones, but I, it's fascinating. I had a, uh, a guy call me, um, call me up and have a meeting with me about five months ago. This will, ex- this will ha- help you understand that there's abundance of money around. This chap called me up and he said, I hear you're starting up a new managed fund. I don't know how he heard the whisper got around because um, I've been asked for years to look after people's money and I've resisted um, because, I, because of the regulation you've got to go through. But finally we found a way to get past that and we've been working for about eight months to get it set up and do all the right things and, and so on. Um, but this, this chap heard we were setting up this managed fund and, and the performance record over the last 10 years of what we've taught people has been pretty good. And... Um, and he said, uh, listen, I've, I've heard you set it up. I, uh, I've heard of your record. Um, he said, uh, I simply look after 20 
high net worth clients. Each of them have at least $100 million of surplus cash to put somewhere. He said, for the last two years, he said, my job is to find somewhere to put the money. He said, I have studied every managed fund in this country and I will not put it in a single one. That's interesting. He said, I found, I found a couple of funds overseas where we will disperse some of the money to, but none of it will go into a managed fund here. 20, 20 individuals with $100 million worth of cash sitting around for a couple of years looking for a home. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's here in Melbourne. And you say, well, where does the money come from? There's, it's, it's just everywhere. So that's quite amazing. So let it continue with this. Different, um, use your home as a profitable investment. So you're using leverage. And, uh, and we look at different ways to leverage. There's things like the property market. You can leverage in using personal loans, equity loans, investment loans. Most of you are aware of property. The other areas people are not aware of um, happens to be really the stock market. And an area that's very secluded, uh, used by the wealthy, is called private investment opportunities. Private investment opportunities are um, things like property consortiums. That they're used for all sorts of reasons. Um, but they're open to only people who know someone. Literally what happens in the, in the, in the industry. Um, for example, if I was to build this hotel here, I wouldn't go out and use all my own money. I would go and find people who would like a return on their money. They might like 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. And so they give me money and I tell them what sort of return they're going to get and what risk is involved and I use their money to build the, house, build the hotel. Because collectively we have a lot more money than individually, don't we? And so this is where private investment opportunities come up. And this is, as I shared yesterday, this is what Richard Branson does. Um, and this is, uh, I learned to do this a number of years ago. So if you've got a good idea, you can always find the money. So you simply have to understand how to structure it, set it up properly, so you can give people a share of the future profit without, um, while still having control to develop the business. There are people here in this room that will actually get a share of the, of the money that's been generated from this seminar because they invested in the company that started up. They were part of a private investment opportunity that actually started up life success in Australia. So they will get a profit or return from that. And it's a win-win. They get a return on their money. We get to do something we love to do and make a profit as well. So that's what a private investment opportunity is. As I said, it's selective. The returns in private investment opportunities can be is very varied. It can range anything from about 15% to well over 150% per annum. Um, now, there's certain regulations around this. One of the things, uh, I get a lot of opportunities that come across my desk and I, I know from this seminar, some of you are going to ring me up and say, I've got this great idea, can you help me get it off the ground? And I'll, uh, and I'll have a look at it and I'll go through and I'll say, you need to do this and this and this and this. And if, and if it's a good idea, then we can work something together. So we'll work a way of getting the money to create the idea. It's pretty simple, isn't it? But there are certain steps you have to go through. And so one of, the, one of the regulations in this country is you can't go out and solicit money from someone you don't know. You can't go out and just send a, a, a mail out to all the people in your local community saying, hey, I'm going to buy some stocks. I, I, I thought you'd be interested. Just give me some money. I'll do it for you. Because what's happened over the time that people have done that and they've been shysters and scammed and so on. So... 
Um, there are proper procedures that have to be followed around this. And one of the things is, uh, is that people need to, these days, need to belong, either be a friend or a personal contact of the person, or belong to a, a legally structured club. So one of the things that will happen after this is you'll get a letter so inviting you to actually join a club. And that club will be, the, uh, will, be, will be a private investment opportunity club. Wherever private investment opportunities come, come up, it could be yours, it could be someone else's, and, and, and properly documented and cash flowed and so on. And as I said yesterday, you actually can cash flow and sell a future profit. So as long as someone's getting a reasonable return out of it, then they're happy to invest the money if it's, if it's reasonably safe and secure. And so that's literally what you do. And so uh, someone then that belongs to the club can be aware of all the private investment opportunities come up and choose whether they want to invest in any or none or all of them. So we, we, we set one up about three years ago um, and it was only a very small one, but the person um, made 35% in a year. For, for, for the use of their money. We got the use of the money. They got, it, they got a, a nice return. Not bad. So that's what a private investment opportunity is. As I said, this is done in the... It's been more, more so done in the construction industry than anything else. But it, is, but it, but it, is, it has been done um, very much in development of ideas, not, not joint venture capital, not to, but this is very different from the normal capital raising that people do. Um, you actually own a share in the business that's created. And you get a share of all the profit from that business in the future. Um, you can use things like personal loans, cash, equity loans, even labour or skill. You know, for example, if I was doing a construction like this, then I'd like to find someone who's a brilliant architect, wouldn't I? So instead of having to pay the, the architect cash for the services, he could get a share in the project. This is something you want to think about as well. You might have certain skills that you can contribute to someone else. And you might say, okay, well, I can, I can actually do your website, and in return, I'll take 5% of the, uh, of the profits through the website. You don't get paid up front, but you get an income stream ongoing forever that's totally passive. And that's what Bob was talking about yesterday. I was talking about yesterday, setting up an MSI. What skills... What talents and abilities do you have that you can supply to someone else that gives you an income stream where they're doing the majority of the work, they're getting a huge benefit, and um, so are you. Same thing with, uh, with the stock market. We've talked about this. You've got personal loans. You've got equity and, and uh, margin loans. There are other ways which we won't go into on how to make money out the stock market, things like short selling. These are more leverage instruments. My word of warning to everyone is do not get involved in high leverage instruments in the stock market. There are things like futures and CFDs that we teach people about, but don't get involved in those until you can first prove to yourself you can make a reasonable return out of quality blue chip stock. There are a lot of, there are a lot of companies around that make money out of running seminars on teaching people how to get rich out of options and, and, and the like. CFDs, be really careful about that because what they do is they normally read a book and say, this is good, a lot of naive people out there, let's create a course and go and teach people. And that's what they do. And I've seen them come and go over the last number of years. Um, so let me just put some figures in here just for this, um, to fill in some blanks. So this is if you're borrowing money, if you have a property, say 350000 and you, you owe $100,000, you have a le an available equity of one hundred and eighty. Now, we could borrow all of that, but we're, again, we're not going to be crazy. We would normally borrow 80%, but let's just work on a round figure of 100000 So we could, we could borrow $100,000 out of our property to buy shares. And... Um, 
we would have an interest cost on that at, say, 7.5%, so that's 7500 Now, we could also take that 100000 and we could borrow another 300000 to buy shares. That 100000 we could borrow another 300000 to buy shares. We're going to play safe. We only borrow two hundred. We have a $100,000 buffer there, and we have an $80,000 buffer here. Is that a big enough buffer? That's massive. You could actually, you would not have to earn a cent for the rest of your life, and this would keep funding that without you putting any money into it. So the $200,000 here at 8.75% at is going to cost us $7,500. Total cost of that is about twenty is 25000 now, we'd get some income from this, wouldn't we? Dividend? 10500 Tax rebate? 7500 That's only a 35, 30% tax. If you're on 45, you'd get more than that. So our total cost of this is $18,000. Sorry, our total income. Our net cost, then, is $7,000. So just our, our 18000 Subtracted from our 25 is $7,000 net cost. So this portfolio, we now have a $300,000 portfolio costing us $7,000 a year, of which the cash we don't have to find because the, this is coming out of the buffers that we've created. We don't have to find the cash. This, of course, would increase in value and over a year, just at a 25% return. It's going to re- give us about $75,000. All of a sudden, a person's turned a liability, their house, into a $75,000 income like that. Does that make sense? You know, it, 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 I read some of the other day, there is, there is nearly $25 trillion of unused equity in Australia. People who have equity in property that is not being used. $25 trillion. That's, that's a lot of money. And they're going to get to the point where they retire and probably die without even understanding that they could have had a life of abundance. And it's in right there already. The net cost of that $7,000, so their net profit... Is sixty-eight thousand dollars. They've just given themselves a sixty-eight thousand dollar pay rise. Not bad for just knowing how to do something. Let's cover the other components here. Rule number six: ensure a future income. You can see what I've got written there. Provide in, provide in advance for the needs of your growing age and the protection of your family. That's exactly what we're doing. Create assets that can be later turned into cash into cash flow and create assets that, that create cash flow now. It's about building up a passive income as well as a non-passive income. So create assets that either later you can sell or give passive income for your future lifestyle. We know rule seven already, don't we? Increase your ability to earn Multiple sources of income. Increase your ability to earn. Not a single person within six months from now should have not less, every person should have not less than half a dozen sources of income. Make it a goal. Just, just make it happen. Just see the picture and you'll, you'll find income sources come to you and take the action to create them. Every person in this room could actually have enough sources of income in the next 12 months to replace their current income. This is just one way with the stock market. Just one way. Uh, Look at others. Let me just quickly show you, because some people have said, well, this stock market thing, can you give me some idea of what happens? Stocks go up and down all the time, don't they? One thing you learn about the stock market is they do this. But they're like a bouncing ball. They bounce up and down and up and down and up and down. The, the key is, is knowing when to buy and when to sell. And that's what I, that's what I teach people. That's, that's my primary expertise. And you can do this with a ruler and a pencil. Don't get sucked into the expensive computer software out there that's supposed to predict you when, when to buy and when to sell. You get a pencil and a ruler and you can draw a line across the prices of, of the stock like that. In fact, let me show you. 
me show you one here. I've got um, one here somewhere. Never ever own a stock that's going down. See, what we can do here is we draw a line across the top like that. This is one tell. One tell was in a down, this is what's called a downtrend. One tell was in a downtrend for two years before it collapsed. Don't own a stock when it's trading below a line. So you just draw a line across the tops of the prices. This is the most basic but the most powerful thing you can understand in the stock market. And most people out there are totally ignorant. of this is, this is, I teach people how to draw a line. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> H-I-H. It was a downtrend for four years. For four years before it collapsed. You simply got to know how... To, how to draw the line and when to buy and sell based on that. Here's a stock. You would draw a line down the top like that. This is BHP. Don't own the stock while it's going down. But when it goes up, you buy the stock. When it goes above that line, and there's certain criteria around this, this is what the home study course teaches you. Buy it when it goes above. Because when the stock is going below this line, this invisible ceiling, it bounces, it hits, it bounces, it hits. What most people don't know is that it's got an up to 9 out of 10 chances of hitting that line and falling down further. Once it goes above it, the probability changes. The longer it remains above it, the higher the probability is of making money. Once it goes above that and remains above that for at least two weeks in a row, it is proven that it has over six out of ten chances of continuing to rise. See, making money in the stock market is actually a business of mathematical probability. That's all it is. If you know the math, you make money consistently. If you don't know it, you're just going to throw your money away. And so we buy the stock, and then while it goes, I'll just skip through that. This is a stock going up, and you see the bounces are getting higher and higher and higher. We draw a line under the bottom, the bounces like that. That's a stock and an uptrend. Here's the same stock, starts to rise up. We don't sell it while it's going up, but we draw a line under the bounces like that. Well, if it remains above it, we don't sell. When it crosses below it, we do. See, our objective is to make not try and buy at the bottom or sell at the top. Our objective is to make 60 to 70% of the rise of all the quality stocks safely, securely, on a consistent basis. If you do that, you'll be making more than 99% of people who are involved in the stock market and don't even understand that. Let me give you some examples of this. Like this is a, this is a, a News Corp. And all you do is draw a line. It's going to have to drive a pencil and a ruler. You draw a line under the bottom like that, and while the stock goes up, you don't buy it till it crosses above that red line, and it continues to go up. You buy it, and you sell it, you sell it up here further, up here. And you just continue to do that. Here's some stocks. Here's Telstra. <laughs> you know, why? here's where Telstra 2 came out. Telstra 1 came out here. This is the profit people made. It made, told us every signal here to sell and people owned it all the way down there. <laughs> here's, a, here's some other stocks, some stocks we had in our portfolio while Telstra has been going down. Main Nicholas, just based on knowing where to draw a line. 75% return in 12 and a half months. Just knowing where to buy and where to sell. And look what happened here. QBE, I like to show people this. This, this was, QBE was the insurer of the basement levels of the Twin Towers. Owned this, bought this stock here, sold it here. Six weeks later, the planes hit. I didn't organise it. <laughs> but, but it made 35% return. Now, you look at this and say, why ever do I have my money in the bank <laughs> or in a managed fund? Look after your own money. Suncorp Metway, 70% return in uh, 16 months. You know, I can go over and I can look at hundreds of stocks and show, well, heaps of stocks and show you this. Year after year after year after year. So if you understand it, then you increase your ability to earn enormously. And that's just one income source, just one. There's lots of others. 
For other great life-changing products or to receive a free copy of our newsletter, The Secret to Wealth, Mind and Money Strategies, go to www.mindandmoney.tv www.mindandmoney.tv